Hi, <laughs> it is so good to see you again. 2021 has been really crazy for me. I am currently doing my postgraduate at Gibbs Business School and it's very intense. Very, very, very intense. It's a lot of work and when I'm not working, I'm exhausted from all of the work that I previously did. So I feel the need to do absolutely nothing. And it's just a vicious cycle where I do a lot of work and then I do absolutely nothing and then a lot of work again and then nothing. So hopefully I'm gonna find balance at some point. It's been a really good experience so far. I'm even in my, my Gibbs business, business clothes at the moment. I normally wear heels, but you can't really see that. I don't know if you could see my, this is the, the outfit that I wear to business school. Anyways, moving on to the topic of today's video. I made a video a really long time ago about my symptoms of ADD slash ADHD. And it turns out the internet is kind of interested in this topic. Who knew? I didn't think that people would be that interested in it, but I was really surprised and everyone left such nice comments about their experience with ADD and their experience with struggling to concentrate. And a lot of people asked if I could share more tips and tricks for how I personally concentrate and how I study with ADD. I thought I should give the people what they want. And this is me giving the people exactly what they want. You're welcome. I'm gonna share a couple of things that I do on days when I'm trying to study or complete an assignment for Vasti or for any work related thing. And hopefully there is someone out there who finds it helpful and who benefits from this discussion. Before we get into it, I have had ADD my whole life, obviously. I was diagnosed in grade one and immediately started taking Concerta. I took medication for my ADD throughout my entire school career and a little bit throughout my undergrad. I still take my ADD medication for days where I need to get a lot of work done and for when I really need to concentrate as hard as possible, but I don't rely on it every single day anymore. I think medication is an incredibly helpful tool and it is definitely something that everyone should look into if they are struggling with concentration. But just for me personally, I've tried some more natural remedies to try and help me with concentration rather than always taking medication. But these tips can be used even if you are taking ADD medication, they could just be, you know, thrown into your life wherever you see fit. Anyway, so we're gonna get into the list and we're gonna chat about it. So tip number one is to wake up early on days when you're studying or if you have an assignment to do. I like to give myself as much time as possible to work. So waking up early means that I waste less time. For example, in the morning, I can sometimes get a little bit distracted by my phone and by, you know, recreational activities. But if I wake up at nine o'clock and get distracted, that means that by the time I'm studying, it's only like 11. Whereas if I wake up at six, then by the time I'm studying, it's eight o'clock. It's not that big of a deal. My tip number two is to eat a big, breakfast and make yourself lots of snacks throughout the day. If I'm feeling hungry, it's just another source of distraction. So I find it very hard to study and focus if all I'm thinking about is food and what I'm planning on eating next. So in the morning, I like to make myself a big breakfast. You can follow me on Instagram to see what my breakfasts consist of. So I'll make myself a big breakfast in the morning and then I will snack if I need it and make sure that I eat lunch halfway through the day. So basically I just make sure that if I'm feeling hungry, I eat so that it's not something that I'm thinking about when I'm trying to, to work. I just spoke to the camera for about five minutes and I didn't realize I forgot to push record. That's very annoying. Anyways, another thing that I really like to do and I feel like some people will shout at me and it's very controversial because the internet says that this is not a good thing to do, but I do it anyways, is I move around a lot when I study. I get very bored sitting in the same spot for hours on end. So I sometimes like to give myself a change of scenery. I know this tip won't really work for everyone, but it really works for me. So maybe you could try it and let me know 
how you feel about it. Sometimes I'll work at my dining room table. I like to work there because I can see the outside world and that's exciting. Sometimes I will move and work on this couch right behind me and sometimes I will even sit on the floor right here and I'll just smash out whatever I'm trying to smash out. And probably the most controversial place where I work is in bed. Uh, I also get very cold. I like to work in bed because it's very warm. I really think you should just work wherever works for you. I know a lot of people that will drive all the way to university to do some work. That for me is too distracting. I could just spend that time getting myself in the zone, rather. That's what I do. Real life footage of me working. give myself plenty of time to study or complete assignments. If someone tells you that they think your assignment will take eight hours to complete, I would give myself 16 hours at least to complete that whole assignment. This just puts a whole lot less pressure on myself to try and do the whole project or study the whole section in one day. It just means I have way more time to kind of get my work done and to get focused. And I'm also more likely to make less mistakes if I give myself more time to complete the assignments. Also, it then means that nine out of 10 times my assignments are done way sooner than the actual deadline. Start your assignments early, kids. The next thing I do is I will exercise before class or before I sit down to study. If I don't exercise in the morning and I'm planning on exercising in the afternoon, all I will think about throughout the whole day is my workout that I plan on doing. So I will often go for a run before Varsity starts or I will do my exercise before starting the day because it just means it's one less thing for me to think about so my brain can be a little bit more focused on the task at hand. Thing number eight is that I will sometimes let myself have a dance party. This tip is not for everyone, I know not everyone is into dancing and I am by no means a professional. Real life footage of me having a dance party. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm struggling to concentrate, I will just give myself like 10 minutes to just kind of smash it out, do some dances, you know, just do, do whatever. I'll just give myself 10 minutes to listen to some music and, and dance and kind of release all of the excitement that I have. Okay, another thing that I do is I avoid caffeine. I avoid caffeine for a number of reasons, not just because I'm ADD, but I find that if I do drink something with caffeine or if I eat something with caffeine, then I get kind of jittery and my heart kind of, you know, flutters quite a lot. I don't like that feeling. And I think it kind of, it, it kind of works for me. I'm gonna carry on not drinking coffee. Finally, I sometimes will put my phone, this is my phone, in my room on the charger or away from me so that it's not something that I'm constantly looking at. When I'm on my breaks, I'll let myself go on my phone and then I'll kind of swing back to it. Those are my 10 tips. I hope that at least one of them helped you in some way, shape or form. I know that not all of these tips are applicable to everybody, but that's kind of just what's worked for me. The only other thing I could say is to just be kind to yourself. Don't lose heart. As long as you're getting your work done, then there's nothing wrong with the way that you study. So do whatever works for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was educational. I hope it was entertaining. Hopefully, I will see you very soon. Bye. I got a comment on a video once where someone was like, why does she sit on the floor when there's a perfectly good couch right behind me? And to that person, I'd like to say, 
I agree. I should probably sit on the couch. That would make a lot more sense. But the floor is very comfortable. I feel like we're just having a little sit down chat kind of thing. So I like the floor, even though I have very decent couches right behind me.